Richard and I have worked together a lot. We've done um, a number of, of, of plays together. Versailles, we've actually been working on for a long time. And when I say we've been working, you know, Richard's been writing the play, but I have been part of the process. And we've done a number of readings, and um, a number of years ago it had a different title and some different characters. But, uh, you know, we've had the pleasure of working on it together for quite a long time. And so it's pretty exciting that we are um, actually going to production right now. Some of these, you know, uh, sleazy entrepreneurs in Florida decided to build a grand um, development, and they chose to, to build it on a swamp and call it Versailles. And unfortunately, it's failing rather spectacularly. I think every director who works sometimes with playwrights that you are not part of your process and sometimes are part of the process, I think I, I think almost every director would, would say something similar to, to what I'll say, which is it's great because you have an interactive experience and you get to ask them questions and you find out what's what really inspired them and what they really meant by things, but it's also kind of maddening because with a dead playwright, um, they're not around to tell you what they think or to tell you that you cut something you shouldn't have. Um, you know, I, I think... Anybody who likes working on new plays finds that the pros totally overweigh the, the cons, but it's, it's certainly pleasurable and challenging. I mean, that's, that's why one writes plays, or at least I do, you know, not that they, it remains in, in the theater of the head, but that it escapes out onto the stage and it, it affects people, and um, they're... They're touched by the lives of these of these people that were <laughs> conceived, uh, you know, out of my brain. I'm really thrilled, actually, because um, because we have one one hell of a cast. We have uh, marvelous actors. Uh, the main character is um, a um, woman uh, named Sharon, and she's uh, in her late twenties, and she's um, been a stripper and a pole dancer her whole life, and she's she wants to get away from that life, and she's finding it very difficult to to escape from the from the swamp of of uh, of her commitments. There is her boyfriend, Brandon, who's a, a rather earnest. He's younger than she is by four years or so, and he he, he met her at the strip club, and she totally blew him away. And, and um, he's in love with her, enamored of her, but he's kind of a klutz. Then there's um, the manager of the Golden Lady. His name is Nick, and he's, a, he's older. He's, I guess, 49 or so. And he's, he really feels that he has his, hit his stride uh, with the strip club that he hopes to take over and actually own and open another one in a while. And he has a, a very... Mm, sexual relationship with uh, with Sharon. And then there's her father, um, Harmon. And he's a rather charming pedophile, if you like. Harmon believes he's he's gotten past that, particularly since the, the, uh, the, the birth of his granddaughter, uh, Sharon's daughter, uh, whom he feels has given him a new lease on life. There's some neighbors, and Bob and Beth, and they live across the live across the street in Versailles, the swamp-like um, development. And both Bob and Beth seem pretty conventional when you meet them, but as the play ensues, we find out um, that they're not so conventional, or Sharon pulls them into um, being less conventional. Mr. Mason, Mr. Mason yes. is it's interesting because in a lot of ways he seems not to be of this world. He's not from Versailles. He's not a family member. He's, um, but he's on a certain level the the moral voice of the play. He also sort of has, uh, in, in some ways, uh, the sort of the poetic conscience of the play. But he's trying to figure out what's going on with Sharon and one of the mysteries in the play. We're having a benefit um, with a reading from the play, excerpts of the play. There'll be some prizes, there'll be some um, awards, there'll be 
some, some drinks and, and some snacks. We look forward to seeing you at the Lynn Redgrave on Monday, 7 October at 7 p.m. It's free, it is free. It? It's free, isn't it's it, Richard? Free. Yes, it's it free. Although we're hoping the folks who come will like what they see and be impressed with what we're doing and, and volunteer to contribute. Nedworks is a, is a soon-to-be 501c3 not-for-profit production company. The focus of Nedworks is to bring from the page to the stage those works that might otherwise go unnoticed and therefore unrecognized. Nedworks encourages submissions of plays, films, television scripts. Visit our website, nedworksproductions.org, to see what else is in the hopper, and of course, submit your own work.